Preface the current era is characterized by the pervasive dominance of capital, with its presence and power extending to every aspect of social life. The influence of capital has reached unprecedented heights, presenting a potentially perilous situation. It is well known that capital controls economic activity, with corporations and affluent individuals wielding vast pecuniary resources and having enormous sway over financial markets, business decisions, and government policies. The insatiable greed and profit-seeking of corporations have resulted in an alarming concentration of wealth and power, leading to staggering levels of inequality and detrimental effects on health, education, and social mobility. Additionally, the all-encompassing grip of capitalism has inflicted severe ecological devastation, with carbon emissions, pollution, and biodiversity loss irreparably damaging the cycles of life and causing ecosystems to collapse. All of this is occurring amid intensifying global economic competition and geopolitical tensions between established and emerging poles within the world capitalist system. The fundamental drive of capital, the relentless pursuit of profit, paradoxically endangers its own ecological foundations while also opening new pathways for growth and expansion. Capital has become untamable within the necessary time frame and scale imposed by the laws of nature, for example, in the field of earth system science. The Nice's city of addressing the global ecological crises at their roots through radical structural change has never been so imperative, and yet evidently impossible within the present structures of the dominance of capital. Capitalism, as a socio-ecological formation with a global reach, inherently lacks the capacity to unite various actors, such as governments, businesses, and communities, to effectively address the worldwide existential threat of climate change driven by the expansion of capital. The post-Cold War order, allegedly built upon the golden arches of peace, is on the brink of another historical phase of escalating international conflicts, consisting of a combined geo-economic and geostrategic rivalry between competing capitalist states and blocs in the context of an increasingly multipolar world order. The realm of capital's dominion now includes not only the sphere of physical commodity production but every other domain of societal living where the so-called value can be extracted, appropriated, and accumulated. As the rich continue to amass capital, the penchant for funneling funds into financial and extractive pursuits rather than into productive and communal goals has paved the way for a surge in financialized capital, exacerbating already widespread global disparities. The vast accumulation of financial and non-financial assets worldwide, surpassing 530 trillion US dollars and amounting to over 650% of global GDP by the end of 2021, is predominantly controlled by a select few who prioritize investing in lucrative andrant-seeking endeavors over ventures that may have greater social benefits Butari deemed less profitable. This widespread trend has gained significant traction since the economic upheaval of 2008, further perpetuating the deep-seated inequities of our global economic landscape. Most contemporary economic systems are profoundly influenced by the paradoxical idea of the infinite growth of capital in the context of finite resources, whose intrinsic values are replaced with exchange values, prices, and profit margins. The pursuit of profit-driven value production under the dominance of capital has resulted in and will continue to lead to socially and ecologically unsustainable futures. Additionally, the rapid growth of artificial intelligence and industrial innovations disconnected from the intrinsic needs of societies and contemporary ecological imperatives further exacerbate these challenges. The coming decades will be an era of increasingly militant and radicalized resurgences, entailing multiple social instabilities and intensifying social conflicts within and between states. This will entail encounters and rivalry between the strategies of alternative forms of capital and alternatives to capital. Polarization, mobilization, and contestation between these increasingly radicalized antipodal visions will shape the future of human social order and our species' relationship with the planet. In our view, these characteristics are set to define the 21st century, and the outcome will determine the fate of all life on Earth. As we have argued in previous works, the global primacy of capital has reached an unprecedented and pivotal point in its history, which has serious implications for critical theory. See Hosseini, 2020, Hosseini and Gills, 2020b, Hosseini and Gills, 2020a, Hosseini et al., 2020, Hosseini et al., 2022. 
Although the desire to understand capital has animated debates for the past two and a half centuries, its dynamics have been constantly changing, making it a complex and evolving system with significant flexibility and resilience over time and across different regions. Consequently, there remain unresolved debates and disagreements among scholars regarding the nature of capital. Given the pressing need for a genuinely sustainable and equitable future, it is crucial that we engage in introspective discussions about the essence of capital to reshape the frameworks that underpin our understanding of how capital comes into and as we will in first it is now to capital a theorization of value, capital, to build new that better serves humanity and works towards an all-on for future. The global financial crisis of 2008 was a turning point after which, the c-word, capital or capitalism, found its way back to the center of critical social imagination and debate over the nature of capital. A shift in the political consciousness of these social forces is rapidly becoming a focal point in critical scholarly discourses that increasingly examine the systemic roots of the imminent socio-ecological calamities facing us during the 21st century. And this has resulted in a surge of attention to Marx's legacy. An effective redefinition of capital is impossible without a sincere engagement with the seminal ideas and enduring legacy of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. The groundbreaking contribution of Karl Marx to the theorization of capital and his insightful perspectives on the logic of the historical expansion of capital, its inherent contradictions and crisis tendencies are profoundly important. Marx's legacy remains sufficiently powerful to be a point of departure or reference for every new serious debate on this issue. His theory of capital, since its inception, has served as a platform not only for later Marxist orthodoxies but also for numerous revisionists, reformists, and antagonists of his approach, interpretations, and prescriptions. However, alongside the recent revitalization of system-oriented transformative consciousness, some archaic lines of controversies around the nature and future of capital and capitalism, between different factions of the old left, including Marxist subdivisions, continue to influence emerging debates and their associated practices of action. The effort to reunite critical theory with its Marxist roots in a dynamic way faces significant intellectual challenges. The emergence of post-structuralist, pluriversalist, and postmodernist criticisms of modernity and universalism has complicated the relationship between critical theory and Marxist value theory. In the second half of the 20th century, some critical theorists challenged the limits of traditional Marxist analyses of labor, value, and class struggle and explored alternative frameworks that prioritize issues such as culture, identity, power, and discourse leading to a distancing of critical theory from Marxist value theory. The predominance of culturalism and postmodernism in critical social theory has transformed the general academic mindset in the global north. This tendency has been reinforced by the decline of collectivized labor in centralized mass production, the ascendancy of post-Fordist decentralized production, and the middle class's extended capacity to maintain their standard of living by working longer hours importing cheap goods made from cheap natural resources produced by cheap labor, often in the global south, and the massive expansion of credit and finance systems facilitating significant personal and commercial debt. Although the rise of high-tech has brought about the decentralization of capitalist production relations and the acceleration of information circulation, it has not spelled the end of monopoly capitalism. Instead, it has morphed into a more sophisticated and lethal version. The post-pandemic era is revealing a paradigm shift in the world's capitalist system, where the organized life, or, life domain, is facing an unprecedented existential threat, as the window to save the planet rapidly closes, highlighting the intrinsic value of life above all else. The impending apocalypse is acutely felt at the grassroots level, as evidenced by numerous recent movements representing a new generation of revolutionary tendencies that we call, revolutions for life, or, life revolts, led by subalterns who courageously risk their lives to defend the most precious and endangered entity, life itself. All of this requires transformative social theory to catch up with the new unfolding of human conscience, an overdue, axiological turn, requiring the centering of the imperative normativity of life in our critical ontological encounters with reality. The axiological turn is about giving primacy to the true value that emanates from life and nourishes life. The true sources of value are all in commons form, 
Life itself is a commons, perhaps the most fundamental of them all after the cosmos. Life is a unity emerging out of a web of diversity. It is dynamic and in constant motion, cyclical yet self-enduring and self-flourishing. If its boundaries are not transgressed and if its capacities to thrive are not undermined, especially ironically in the name of value. This book proposes a novel approach to theorizing capital and capitalism by incorporating the normativity of life into its critical analysis and recognizing the absence of inherent true value in capital. It challenges the prevailing belief that capital is the ultimate source of worth and redirects our attention to the flourishing of life and the preservation and enhancement of its thriving capacities. This transformative perspective calls for a fundamental re-evaluation of our socio-economic and political systems, aiming to transcend the destructive contradictions and deficiencies of capitalism. Redefining capital necessitates redefining value in the process. Although the notion of value has been neglected in most modern social theories, Marx's assertion that value forms the foundation of capital remains as relevant as ever. See Marx, 1993, page 421. This, however, raises the question of how to redefine capital while also acknowledging the value of socio-ecological relations in shaping it. These relations should not be seen simply as a context or precondition, but rather as a set of interrelated causal mechanisms that are embedded in and against capital. Merely contemplating the socio-ecological, cultural, and geo-political dimensions of capitalist functionality as the vital conditions for economic exploitation, without theorizing their re-construction in the process of capitalist value production, is inadequate to grasp the complex challenges posed by capital, and the prospects for profound conflicts and paradigm shifts. Redefining capital and value entails revisiting and expanding upon Marxian conceptions while deploying a new perspective inspired by a new discourse on the commons, and commoning developed here in the form of a modular conceptual framework. This framework, built on a critical realist ontology, conceptualizes capital as an ensemble of multiple interrelated socio-historical, infra, processes, rather than as an analytically isolated inner structure of the capitalist system, see chapters 3 and 4. This perspective goes beyond the limitations of productivism, economism, and the post-value turn while emphasizing intersectional and ecological dimensions and complex relationships with post-capitalist alternatives and transformative movements. This book reflects on the strengths, potentialities, and limitations of the Marxian tradition of understanding capital in terms of value. It then argues for expanding on these limitations and proposes relevant solutions by presenting a new normative value theory that prioritizes the sources of life as commons and their intrinsic value. Thus, offering a commonist value theory. This theory encompasses both critical and analytical elements. According to this new theory, the ultimate sources of what we call true value are precisely the organized life's conditiones sine quibus non which under capitalist relations are perverted into the causal sources of what we call fetish value as the essence of capital see hosseini 2022a true value is sustainably re produced only through the commoning modes of living and interconnecting a commons whether material or immaterial naturally occurring or manufactured is a living organism made up of communities of interconnected and interdependent entities. In normal conditions, the activities of these entities borrow their vitality from the entirety of the commons and, in return, contribute to the survival and thriving of the whole, inclusive of all individual, living, entities. One for all, all for one, and unity and diversity, this is how true value is regenerated. Under the supremacy of capital, however, the so-called modern civilization emerged as a development through which not only were commons expropriated, but also decommonized, losing their essence as commons. Capitalism has now become capitality, a life-killing mode deeply coded into the genetics of our daily lives, thanks to its axiological primacy. Only a profound, re- Commonization of our modern socio-ecological relations can liberate life from the immense grip and power of capital, a transformative process that holds the potential to effectively transcend the predicament of mere survival, while also transforming ubiquitous capitalist relations. Chapter 1 Introduction 